Hello Airsoft friends and welcome to this video today which I am incredibly excited about because today I am unboxing the very first ever Novrich GBBR. But before we get into that, many of you may be wondering why my uploads have been a bit sporadic recently. Well, this is my little boy Teddy and he's a proper cute little bugger any. He's doing great, mom is doing great and we are just so happy and filled with love that we've got this little guy in our lives. And I just wanted to say an extra special big thank you to all of my Patreon members and all of my channel members because you guys have really helped the transition of getting this little guy in our lives and we couldn't be happier. I'm excited for when he gets a little bit older because I'm going to teach you how to edit videos and you're going to be my little personal video editor aren't you? Now that for me was pretty exciting news but I must admit having a little look at this first gas blowback rifle is you know on the same kind of level. Let's waste no more time and have a little look at the SSQ22 and here we have it. Now it is based off a Ruger 1022 rifle but it's a little bit more modernized than you may expect if you have a little Google of that type of rifle. To my knowledge there's actually only really one other rifle available on the market that fits this kind of criteria and that would be the KJ Works KC02. I've never been hands-on with one of those before but looking at the kind of pictures there is definitely differences and I'm expecting the SSQ22 to have that very specific Novrich touch to it as well. Without any further ado let's just crack this thing open and see what we've got. Now I must admit I am very very excited about this. Oh wait what's... <laughs> We got a little insert here with a very happy Joseph down at the bottom. Welcome to the Norwich GBBR family. Thank you very much. I'm proud to be a member of that now. And I'm sure you will be too. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh that does look very tasty. I'm just going to have a quick flick through the manual to see if there's anything in there that I'm not going to be aware of. Oh, it's got a feature breakdown. What have we got? We've got a TDC hop up there. Oh, it recommends using a hand stop, the one to four variable optic. Oh, it's got a Picatinny stock mount. I think that's the same as the SSG-10A3. So maybe the SSG-A10A3 folding stock is compatible with this. It doesn't look like this has a folding stock as stock, as, as the stock stock. It's got side M-lock rails on there as well, as we've seen when we opened up the box. And it says it's suppressor ready as well. Oh, pro tip, clean your barrel before you start to get 100% out of the SSQ-22. With new factory guns, oil residues and other debris may get in the barrel. It is good to know that. I do often see in like the group pages and whatnot, people complaining about performance being not as good as they'd like it to be out of the box. But 99 times out of 100, somebody says, give it a quick clean they do that and then everything's Gucci. Right, that's all the information that we need from the book. Let's just get to the rifle. And I must say, it does look really, really cool. I mean, at the minute, it's just like some mad kind of pistol. Look at that. I mean, with the magazine in there, it's going to stick out. But that would be like, you know, almost kind of shotgun-esque. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I do like the rack on that. That is really cool, unless you do it AK style underneath. Oh, that is sick. I like that. And then in the box, we have also got one of the magazines here, which I believe is about 36 rounds. And that will go in here just like so. Oh, that went in quite nicely. Look at that. That's cool. Oh, I do like that. Oh, that's so, oh, that feels so cool. And of course, we have got the stock in here as well. And no, it is not a folding stock. It just bolts onto the Picatinny bit at the back of the rifle. So I think without further ado, let's just get this stock mounted on the rifle and see what it looks like all together. And there we go have it and I must admit this thing looks really really sick. It's kind of in line with the SSG-10 A3 like I said before it looks like the stock is compatible on the back there as well if you did want to have a folding option. Oh that is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is really, really cool. Let me get some gas into this and also modify the magazine a little bit just because on this mag, there's a little catch on the magazine follower here. And what that does is that's going to catch back and hold this here like that. But I want to dry fire this in my room a little bit because I want to feel what it's like to shoot it. And I don't want to have to worry about, you know, cocking that all the time. Let's modify that. Let's get some gas into it and let's see what this thing feels like to shoot. So there we have it, magazine is gassed up and in, so I can now dry fire it in here as much as I like. But first, we are gonna be safe and make sure it is completely empty because I don't know if there's a BB in here. So I'm gonna fire it somewhere safe just to make sure that I am safe while I'm firing it. And we are safe and oh my days, like that. 
that's cool. That that is really cool. Oh. <laughs> I do, I do like that. I do really like that. Okay, so with the magazine, if you put it in just straight like that, it won't catch properly and it will come out. So what you want to do, there's a little like nub in here on the front of the mag. You want to push it in far and kind of pull it backwards a little bit and then that locks it in place with the catch that's on this back side of the mag. We do need to put an optic on here as well though, and it does recommend using the LPVO one that Novrich does, which is this site here. Now it's called LPVO, which stands for Low Powered Variable Optic. It's low powered because it only goes between one times and four times. So you can kind of use it as a red dot site if you wanted to, but it's also kind of designed for those low range checking where your BB is going. Although to be fair, when I use my snipe, I kind of don't really often use beyond four to five times on the like three to nine times scope that they do anyway. So yeah, maybe this on four times zoom would be perfectly fine for me in the field. I also do have the three times magnifier and red dot sight V3 from Novrich, which I recently talked about in another video, which I absolutely love these, but I think these may be more suited for an AR type rifle as opposed to this, which I kind of get a feeling it's kind of a rifleman slash maybe dmr -y vibe from it. It is only 36 rounds, so I probably wouldn't want to use it regularly at a CQB site because I like to pull the trigger a lot. However, if you watch your shots, then you're probably going to do perfectly fine there with it. For me, for now though, I think I'm going to put these sights to the side and I am going to mount my LPVO. And just like that, we have now got a full set of optics on our rifle here and that oh <laughs> that looks sick man oh my days in terms of feature sets on this, you have got a whole host of QD sling points. So we have got QD sling points here at the front, in the middle, at the back, and we do have some extra sling points here at the back of the stock, just like that. And I guess if you wanted to, you could always mount some slings in these holes here as well. Moving back towards the front of the rifle, we have got M-lock on the sides and also on the bottom, so loads of room to mount M-lock accessories there if we wanted to. So maybe you've got like an M-lock peck box, or you've got a flashlight, or something like that. Maybe you've got a laser that you want to mount to the side of this, you will be able to do that. You could also put some Picatinny adapters in here as well, so you have a standard Picatinny rail on the sides or on the bottom too. Not to mention the top Picatinny rail we have here, which goes along the full distance of the upper receiver and a little bit out onto the barrel, and it also does have that break in there as well for the TDC. And I must admit, I'm very happy to see that there's a TDC on this thing. I don't understand why airsoft factories and makers aren't making more risks with TDCs on them. It makes it much easier to adjust, it makes it faster, it makes it more accurate. They're just ultimately a much better design to have on there than the standard little wheelie things like inside riffs. Well, I guess it may be a little bit odd for an M4 to have a TDC, but you know what? I would like to see a manufacturer do that just to see what happens. Some people tell me it's weird that I change my hop up a lot when I'm playing airsoft, but I like to adjust it for ranges to make sure that I've got the optimal hop. Because if somebody's like quite close and behind a wall, you could put your hop right up and go sideways like this to curve the BB around the corner to take them out. Or if they're further away, again, add more hop. So you get more range. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's a bit pointy there. I was just flipping the rifle around in my hands a little bit and I kind of flipped that over into the palm of my hand and it poked it quite a bit. So that bit is a little bit on the pointy side. So just be careful <laughs> with it when you're using it and maybe wear gloves. You should be wearing gloves anyway because they just make airsoft much more enjoyable when you've got gloves on. It does take a little bit of getting used to but you'll thank me if you're not wearing them in the minute. Just down by the trigger guard we have got our safety which is currently on fire and the only other option you have is safe. This is a semi-auto rifle only. There's no full auto version available and in terms of variants it comes in one dual, 1.5 and two dual and I have to have the two dual version. This does look very cool. I'm not the kind of person that likes to get a riff just to be different. One of my friends loves to get really obscure riffs and he's the only person within the 25 mile radius who's got that type of magazine. So when he runs out of BBs or something, we can't give him extra mags, but he's having a wonderful time and that's what Airsoft's all about. But with this riff, I'm willing to make that change because it looks really cool and I love the magazines that come with it. I love the fact it's got the TDC, the recoil feels really nice the operation of it as well like i'm gonna be pulling the charging handle on this thing just for fun like all the time because it's just a very enjoyable thing to do and if you've got no mag in there and you want to put one in and you come up 
Oh, that feels so nice. It does say it is suppressor ready, but I just want to make sure it is 14 mil counterclockwise. And it is. Look at that. Wonderful. So you can pretty much take any standard suppressor that you've got and put it onto this bad boy. Oh, right. Here we go. Time to do some chrono. Let me set it to 0.4 gram BBs because that is what we are going to be using today. And let's see what we do with it. On the 0.4 gram BBs, I got 298, 308, 300, 297, 299, 299, 296, 298. So that is right about 1.67 joules, which is a little bit lower than I was expecting it to be because it is the two joule version. However, a few things. One, I need to do the full cleaning on there. So there could be some gunk in the barrel that is reducing the power. Two, the hop unit isn't set perfectly accurately yet just because I was so excited. I wanted to get out of the box straight away and three the gas that I'm using literally was in a delivery van and been shipped because I've just ripped it out of the box right now to get to it as quickly as I can do so with the gas being a little bit colder than you'd want it to be that could also explain the lower FPS or the lower power from the rifle of course if you want to take it up and get it even more stronger you can put black gas in there which is going to raise the FPS even more you can also tune it by playing around with the BB weight if you want to however the 0.4 gram BBs are recommended for this version and you can also get different nozzles for the SSQ 22 which I have here it comes in a three pack and it includes the one jewel the 1.5 and the two jewel version now this one already has the two jewel version of this in there so it's only if I wanted to bring the FPS down that being said though I do want to go out with a little bit of a shooting with it and see how it fares so give me a moment and I'll be back with the results <laughs> I am back from my testing and I must say I am very pleased with this thing. With the 0.4 gram BBs I was able to consistently hit a body size target at 60 meters. Sorry I don't have the footage by the way my memory card just seemed to have shat itself and I've lost all of that. That being said gameplays are coming up so make sure you subscribe to the channel not to miss out on that content. Like the video let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.